It's right here, folks. There's still a few seats left at the big top. There's still time to see the incomparable Dosetti, the star attraction of the great person Walt Disney. His incredible feats of daring will amaze and amuse you, will thrill you and chill you. Hurry, hurry! Three or four, Joe. We'll be late. Doing, Jim, counting the house? Yep, Joey, we're packed to the canvas again. Ah, uh, that Dozetti fella you hired for your main act sure drags the people in, doesn't he? Yeah, he's one of the best attractions we ever had. I only wish he could get along better with other people, though. But he thinks he's a great poobah or something. Uh, don't forget, Jim, when, when a man has no faith in anything else, he's got to have faith in himself. You know something, Joey? If you didn't look so comical, I'd say you just said a very wise thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh oh, Jim, what time for the video is that? I gotta go watch. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man who defies death on the high wire, presenting the one, the only man in the world to do the forward somersault on the high wire, the fantastic, the unusual, the sensational, death defying Bill Zetti. <laughs> Back, you're too close. Anthony, Anthony. Remember, Dosetti, you're the greatest. Show does any. I always do a great show. What's the matter with Mr. Dizetti, Mr. Champion? Uh, he's been up in the air too long. He needs something to bring him down to earth. <laughs> They're not a great act anymore. They fell. 
Now they're gone, and one, one doesn't talk about such things. It's bad luck. We make our own bad luck, does Eddie? Don't argue. The seam in my shoe is split. It needs mending. Pete, everybody around here at Laney's got a chip on their shoulder. What's the matter with them? Dozetti. Oh, Dozetti. Mr. Tim, could you please spare one of the lemon with the police? Yes, Bono, what is it? It's the Senor Dozetti. So hard we try to please him, all the time he's a complaint. The music is no good. The music is isn't good. The drum roll is too long, the drum roll is too short. The drummers are too loud, or she's not too loud. Please, never just a ride. Well, don't worry about it, Bono. I'll try to straighten that out. Well, please talk for him, because my boys, they're going to be mad. And I'm going to be mad, too. Uh, tell the boys to take it easy. I'll fix it. Thank you. Too much. Here we go again. Yes, Colonel. What is it? I'm moving the ponies to another location. Don't you like the spot I picked out for you? Yes, Pete, it's fine, very convenient. But the Zeddy says the ponies are too near his wagon. They bother him. They disturb his rest or something. Why didn't the Zeddy move his wagon? Be a lot easier. It isn't very easy to argue with the Zeddy. Look, boss, I know the Zeddy's a big attraction, but I'm telling you, he's causing more trouble than he's worth. He's always got somebody in an uproar. I guess you're right, Pete. Sure, I'm right. And if we intend to avoid real trouble among the act, somebody'd better set Mr. Dozetti right. And that somebody is me. Nobody else. Right away. It's about time everyone realized I am the star of this show. I think most of them do, dear. Mr. Champion. Hello, Muriel. May I come in? Yes, of course. Dozetti, how are you? I am very well. But you didn't come here to inquire about my health. Why not? You're my star attraction. Your health is very important to me. Uh, would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, thank you, Muriel. You wanted to say something? Yes. And I guess I might as well get right down to cases. Dozetti, I wanted to talk to you about getting along better with the rest of the acts. I don't understand. Well, let me put it this way. Lately, there's been a lot of friction between you and the other performers I don't think is necessary. Well, the other acts are jealous. I'm the star of the show. It's as simple as that. No, Dozetti. We've had equally as big attractions. That's not the answer. With Dozetti headlining the show, business is good, isn't it? Forget about business. This is more than just a circus to me. This is a big family. So far, it's been a happy family. I'd like to keep it that way. Well, what do you expect me to do about it? I want you to cooperate in keeping the rest of the season a happy one. And I suggest you talk to the other acts so they can get along with me. They will if you cooperate with them. Before you go, Mr. Champion, I don't want Joey the Clown working under my wire. What's the matter with you? The laughs are good for the act. I don't share my spots with anyone. I am the star of the show. You may be the star of this show, but I'm still running it. Remember that. Mr. Champion, please. I know Dezetti is difficult at times, but he's really a good man. Be patient with him, won't you? I'll see what I can do to straighten things out. You've done more than enough as it is, Muriel. Why did you run after him? Did you find it necessary to defend my attitude? Please, darling, don't upset yourself. You know you have a show to do tonight. I will not be dictated to. Of course not, darling. All right, boys, get those cops back where they belong. What happened? I'm still running this show. Sure, sure. Did I say you wasn't? Joey? I tried to shut my eyes to it. I thought things would straighten themselves out. I've even tried to like the guy. Uh, who, who are you talking about? The man is impossible. You can't talk sense to him. You can't reason with him. I don't know how Muriel puts up with it. Oh, you mean does Eddie? Of course. Who else? Still has his contract. Well, contract or no contract, I'm not going to let that ten-headed baboon stir up any more trouble in this show. But you know, he even had the nerve to tell me to keep you out of the ring during his act. Didn't like the laughs. But you go on as usual. Uh, Tim, lean over here a minute, will you? Come on, lean over. Uh, hold still there. Uh, uh, how's that collar feel? It hurts my neck. Yeah, it hurts my neck, too. But I wear it, even if it is a pain in the neck. Why? For the good of the show. Yeah. 
<laughs> I get your point, Joey. I'll cool off. But Uncle Joy, you don't even wear that collar. <laughs> <laughs> feeling, Joey? Oh, not too bad. Doc says it's just a sprain. I'll be back in that center ring in a couple of days. Anyway, the laugh's on Dozetti. He didn't want you under his wire, but if you hadn't have been there and willing to risk your neck to break his fall, he'd probably be dead by now. Everybody says you're a hero, Uncle Joey. How is Dozetti? Just a simple break. It'll heal fast, the lucky dog. He's got a lot to be thankful for. I'm glad. Well, Joey, let me know if you want anything. I've got to start wrapping up for the next move. All right, Tim. Sorry I won't be there to help you. You take care of yourself. <laughs> Didn't you hear what I said, Uncle Joy? Everybody says you're a hero. Hmm. Yeah, I know. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. You're also saying that Zeddy deserves what happened to him. Well, I guess you can't blame him for that. He's been awful nasty to everyone. Well, what makes him act that way, Uncle Joy? I don't know. I, I don't know unless he's afraid. Afraid? You're sure not afraid on the high wire. No, I don't mean that kind of fear. I, I mean as though we were, oh, afraid to, to meet a situation or a problem, you know. And when he's got that fear, he acts like he's tried to build his own separate little world to live in so he won't have to meet those problems. I don't know. Situation. Gee, you're smart, Uncle Joy. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, if I was really smart, I... I figure out a way to crawl into that little world Dozetti lives in. I find out what's eating him. He sure it's hard to understand. I tried to be friends with him, but he wouldn't let me. Well, you keep right on trying, Corky. Anybody can do it, you can. <laughs> oh, oh, not there. <laughs> when we get to Galesburg, they will expect to see Dozetti. And when Dozetti does not appear, then Mr. Champion will find out how important I am to this show. Mr. Champion knows you have a great act, Dozetti. When the crowd stay away or demand their money back, then he will really know. I hope Champion goes broke. You frighten me when you talk like that. Do you know what it would do to us if this show went broke? What it would do to our friends? Friends? What friends? The people in this show hate me as much as I despise them. Oh, hello, Corky. Come in. I couldn't knock. I had my hands full. I can see that. Everybody's sorry that you got hurt, and they sent you a few presents. Presents? For me? Yes. There's some cigars from Meister Bono, and a book from Colonel Merriweather, and some birds from Gypsy Nell. She says they're good for mending broken bones. And besides, they taste real good. Thank them all for me. I didn't have anything I thought you'd wanted, but if you want these errands done or special chores done, you just call me. Thank you very much, Corky. Bye now. I'm gonna be going. The guys I don't smoke. The book I've already read. The blackberries, they're bad for my stomach. But I will smoke the cigars. I'll read the book again. I'll eat the berries if they kill me. Oh, does that <laughs> <laughs> Out there today, or we'll be in real trouble. What do you mean? 
Well, most of these folks are coming to see our star attraction, Dosetti. They're mighty friendly folks around here, but they're liable to be mighty disappointed if he doesn't appear. Well, I can't say that I blame him. That's life, isn't it? Here I've been planning on getting rid of Dosetti. I get rid of him, and I'm in trouble. Huh. Well, then, give him Dosetti. Look, Joey, even Dosetti, with as great an opinion as he has of himself, can't work on a high wire with a broken leg. Well, I didn't mean him. I, I was thinking of Muriel. She's a Dosetti, too, you know. That's right. Corky, go tell Muriel to get over here right away. Sure thing, Mr. Champion. You wanted to see me? Yes. Sit down. I want you to do something for me. Anything at all. Muriel, I want you to go on tonight in Dosetti's place. Oh, no. I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Everybody knows you had a high wire act of your own before you married Dosetti. And you even taught him part of your routine. And I know you've been practicing because I've seen you. Yes, yes, but I could never go on in his place. This is a real emergency. He's right, Muriel. The show's in real trouble without a high wire act. There's a very good reason why I can't go on. You wouldn't understand. No, I'm afraid I don't understand. When I first married Dozetti, he didn't have any confidence in himself. He had a fear of the high wire. But I kept flattering him, telling him how great he was. Till finally he had the courage and confidence to become the great performer that he is today. But if he can't go on, what's wrong with you going on in his place? Because I've convinced him that no one can go on in his place. If I went on and drew as big an audience as he does, and got as much applause, I might destroy everything I've built up. Muriel, are you sure it was worth the price? No, I don't understand. So that he's a star, isn't he? Yes. But outside of you, he hasn't got a friend in the world. That's not true. He does have friends. Lots of them. When he was first hurt, everyone was sending him gifts. Look, Muriel, I, I think it's time you know. The Colonel and the other circus folks, they don't know anything about those presents. That was all Corky's idea. But why? Because he he was trying to make a human being out of your husband. He, he was trying to make Dosetti think that he did have some friends and trying to make Dosetti soften up a little. He, look, Muriel, we all know Dosetti's a big man. Dosetti's never going to be a great man until he learns a little humility, a, a little understanding. And the sooner he finds that out, the better he's going to be, because right now he's nothing but a selfish egotist. Mr. Champion, tell Pete to put up our rigging. I'll go on in Dosetti's place. Atta, girl. <laughs> We'll be here a whole week. This is a big town. And this is the halfway mark of the tour. There's four months left of the season. Hi, Muriel. Oh, good morning, Muriel. I uh, hear Dosetti's leg has healed perfectly. But his pride hasn't healed. It will in time. It's what I keep telling myself. In the meantime, Dosetti has decided to leave the show. He doesn't mean it. Sure, he'll feel differently now that he can work again. He's leaving now. Don't let him do it, Muriel. <laughs> Mr. Champion, it's no use. I've argued and argued with him. He won't change his mind. 
Muriel, uh, you're going with him, of course. What do you think? I took your advice once before. It broke Dozetti's heart. Pride may be a sin, but it made a star of Dozetti and kept him going. So he thought he was an important man. What's wrong with that? I've had to watch him shrink up inside of himself every time I went on for him. I kept hoping he'd change, but he hasn't. Won't you take time to think it over? I don't want to think about it anymore. I'm going into town to buy tickets for Chicago. Now. Come in. Mr. Dozetti? It's a long story, Corky. You wouldn't understand. You're running away, and you'll never solve a problem by running away from it. Who told you this? Uncle Joy, and Uncle Joy's right. You won't be any happier if you run away. You'll miss the circus, and so will Muriel. And your friends will miss you. No one will miss me, Corky. You're wrong. Everyone will miss you. Right now, they're waiting for you to come back. Because the whole world is made up of people who need one another. You want to be a big man, important, don't you, Mr. Dozetti? I once thought I was. Well, the way to be a big man is to think about others, to be generous, and to forgive. Who do I have to forgive, Corky? Yourself. It's a great end. Uh, boss, what do you suppose got into that dozetti? Well, I don't know. Human nature being what it is, sometimes it takes a real good kick in the pants to make a human being out of a person. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 